in 2 Timothy chapter 2. We'll just go ahead and read verses 1 through 6. Praise God. This is coming out of the NASB version of the Bible. <coughs> you therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others. There's just a couple of teach, teach others also. A couple of things that stuck out to me that we're to be strong in the, in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so the scripture teaches us that the way that we get into Christ, amen, is that is that the Lord, he came to the earth, he died on the cross to set us free, amen, and, and what he accomplished at the cross opens up the opportunity for you and I to be placed in Christ, and in that place, there's a, there, grace flows, amen, grace flows into our heart and our life, and whatever it is that you need in your life, you know, I want you to know that, grace is uh, is released by the person of the Holy Spirit. I, I believe that, right? Grace is released by the person of the Holy Spirit. Wherever there is sickness, like whether it's in someone's mind, whether it's in their physical body, whether it's heartbreak from their past, grace is ready to be released and to bring healing into your life. Whatever it is that you're dealing with, I want you to know grace is dispensed by the person of the Holy Spirit and it's available to us because of what Jesus has already done for us on the cross. Hallelujah. And if you're born again tonight, if you're born again, then that means that you're in Christ. The Apostle Paul talked about that multiple times. In Him, in whom, in Christ. Amen. And it means that you're seated in Him. You've been placed in Him. And because of your position, the Word of God says you're righteous. Amen. It's not your own righteousness. Amen. It's His righteousness that clothes us. And praise God because of that, we have access to the grace of God. We have access to the hope of God. Praise God. I'm excited for God's hope tonight. Amen. I'm excited for what God has done in our hearts and in our lives. And you know what the Lord wants us to do, really? He wants us to take the hope that He's placed in us and to share it with other people. Amen. I hope you know that. Listen, as a matter of fact, part of my message tonight, I was thinking in the prayer room, it, it has to do really one of the main it, uh, ideas in these first passages of scripture. It talks about being a good soldier. We haven't gotten there quite yet, but it talks about being a good soldier. And I was thinking, you know, there's either in the, in the kingdom of God, there's either civil, in any kingdom, there's either civilians or soldiers. Amen. Civilians or soldiers. Now, we've been very fortunate since... America has been alive to not have to have fought a war on our own domestic soil. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for our men in the military that fight hard to keep us free. Thank you, God, for your blessings that have been upon our nation. Amen. So, so, but, but let me tell you, in war-torn countries, the civilians, what ends up happening to them is, is that a lot of times, I'm not saying none of them stand up and fight, but typically they bear the brunt of the enemy coming against them and attacking them, amen? Whereas the soldiers are actually on the battlefield, they're, 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 they have their armor on, they have their weaponry with them, and they're moving forward, and they're taking the fight to the enemy, and they're, and they're, move, and they're progressing in the fight, amen? And, and I want you to know that in the kingdom of God, there's sometimes there's civilians and then sometimes there's soldiers. And what I'm trying to say is this, is that even in the kingdom of God, there's people that take the onslaught. They take the burden. The enemy is attacking them. And it's not God's will. I want to be clear about that. That's not God's will that you and I would sit there and just be pummeled by the plans of the enemy. Okay, the Lord and the Word of God teaches us that God wants us to have victory in our in our lives and that Jesus purchased victory for us. Amen. And so and sometimes in, in addition to civilians, I mean it wouldn't be too bad if you're not getting pummeled, but you know, some people sit back and they might want to watch it through their window. Right? It's like a fireworks show. When as long as you're not getting hurt, look at all this. Look, watch it, watch it on the news. It's kind of like a, it could it ends up being a spectator kind of thing. You know, as long as it's not touching me, I'm Okay, I want to encourage you to know tonight that that's not really the way that it's supposed to be in the kingdom of God. We're supposed to be mobilized. The Holy Spirit, we're supposed to allow the Lord to do a work on the inside of our hearts, amen, and for us to be mobilized to do the work of God, amen, to bring the hope of glory outside the walls of the church, man, just to be a witness. Sometimes it starts off as something as simple as just being a witness, to 
reading your word, getting a scripture in your heart, praying and spending time with the Lord, and allowing the Holy Spirit to move in your heart and in your life, thanking Him. Have you ever take time to thank the Lord? Come on, church. Do you take time to thank the Lord for what He's done for you? Amen. Spending a little bit of time in His presence and just thank Him. Thank you for the blood, Lord. Amen. Thank you for the blood. I remember whenever, for the longest time, my prayer really was focused on, what are you going to do for me, Lord? Everybody wants a blessing. But whenever I go preach at the jailhouse, everybody, oh, pray that. Pray for my court. I'm going to pray for your court day, brother. I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit goes before you. And then he leads the way. But listen, we need to get to the point where we start praying, Lord, I want to thank you. I want to praise you for all that you've done. How you saved me out of darkness and brought me into the marvelous light. How you filled me with your Holy Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for what even the things that you've already done. But hallelujah. What you're gonna do? What's done in the spirit? I believe in your word, Lord. You've already done it in the spirit. I'm gonna hold to your truth. Have your way, oh Lord. Have your way, oh Lord. That's the difference between a soldier and a civilian. I don't want to sit on the couch. I sat on the couch now. Hold on. Hold on, preacher. Don't get too sassy. It's not like you've never sat on the couch. I've sat on the couch. I have sat on the couch. I don't want to sit on the couch. I want, and listen, I believe the Lord's doing something in our church. I believe the Lord's starting to spark some things up. Hallelujah. He's starting to call some fire. Do you believe that you're called to be a witness for the kingdom of God? Somehow, some way, do something for the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad you believe that. Praise yes. God. So he goes on. Let's just keep reading. So you're in Christ. You need grace, right? Grace brings healing. Grace brings deliverance. Grace is, the, is a, listen, I know I've taught this recently, but it's like if you got dirty hands, if you got germs on your hands, what do you do? You go to the hand sanitizer, right? You go to the hand sanitizer. The dispenser is the represent, is representing the Holy Spirit. Grace is the hand sanitizer. I need help. I need help with cleansing. Amen. I go over there and I access it. I access it. Praise God. And I, I receive the release of the Holy Spirit. What is it that you need tonight? I want to encourage you to know that it's already been paid for. That Jesus already paid for it at the cross. It belongs to you. Amen. You can believe it. We can believe in the truth of the word of God. We can stand on the truth of the Lord. Help our faith. Lord, help us when our mind gets in the way of what our spirit tells us. Oh, Lord God. Redeem us. Lord God, renew our mind. Hallelujah. According to the truth of your word. Amen. Hallelujah. So you're in Christ. You have access to grace. And Paul says, look at this. He says, the things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses. So, so look, Timothy, you've been listening. You've been listening to the messages. You've been listening to me preach. You've heard many things. Entrust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others. Now, listen, if the apostle Paul doesn't want women to preach, I can't agree with the apostle Paul. Because if it wouldn't, and I don't think that that's really what it is. There's a lot of contextual information going on here. We're not going to try to break it down, okay? But Paul gave the letter of the Romans to Phoebe. And Phoebe got on a boat and sailed the Mediterranean Sea, my brothers and sisters. If it wouldn't have been for the faithfulness of Sister Phoebe, who many scholars believe had a, had a church in her house, then we would not have the letter to the Roman church. And we learn a lot of information about, about what Jesus did for us, about justification, sanctification. We need the letter to the Roman church. And listen, I was saved from a woman preacher. Hallelujah. There weren't no men out there. No men out there. Everybody probably want to judge that woman preacher when they don't believe in women preachers. But there weren't no men preaching the Holy Ghost fire and the truth of the gospel. And I thank God for that woman preacher that I walked in that church. And then I gave my heart to the Lord. Praise God. She was sensitive to the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. So, entrust these to faithful believers. Hallelujah. Who will be able to teach others also. This word is precious. This word is, is, is so, it's like a treasure. I've talked about that recently. That is the pearl of great price. It's the treasure hidden in a field. 
And when we release this message, it's so important. Listen, we go through things in our life. We have ups and downs. I understand that. But it's so important that you understand we have to learn to entrust the gospel with people that are going to carry it home. And that's what the Apostle Paul is telling us. Entrust this word of truth into the hearts and lives of people that are going to carry it home. Brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you. Let the word of God marinate in your heart. Let the word of God let, cry out to the spirit. Let God have his way in you. Amen. So he can do a work through you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Suffer hardship with me as a good Soldier of Christ Jesus. And, and, and in verse 4 in the NASB, it says, No soldier in active service. In the King James, it says, Warreth. So the, he's a, he's no soldier that warreth entangles or intertwines himself in the affairs of everyday life. Yeah. Now listen, he's not, Paul is not telling you you're not supposed to have a job. Now, the Holy Spirit might tell you that. And if the Holy Spirit tells you that, then, you know, and I'm not speaking to you that are women and, you know, and you take care of your children at home. That's not what I'm saying. I'm trying to say, you know, that's not what he's talking about there. He, because, as a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul made tents. The Apostle Paul made tents along with Apollos. And, um, and so that's not really what he's saying. But what he's saying is we can get caught up in the everyday affairs of the world. We can allow the cares of the world to begin to overwhelm us and then we can get caught up and intertwined in some things we ought not really be getting intertwined in. You understand what I'm saying? I, I mean, I, I, don't, I hate to keep preaching it almost every time I come up here, but there's things of the world. I'm not even going to say the little things right now because I'm going to let the Holy Spirit speak it to your heart. The things that the world offers to people. Yes. I mean, you just go ahead and plug in the thing that just popped in your head right now because the yes. Holy Spirit just spoke something to you. Things that you thought the world was going to give you that was going to make you happy and it didn't make you happy, it just left you empty. Yes, or it might have tempted, scintillated your taste buds just for a second there. It might have kind of got your little your butterflies in your tummy going for a little bit or, or whatever the case. But it doesn't last. And as a matter of fact, if, you, if we keep going down those pathways and looking for hope in other areas and entangling ourselves in the things of the world, it's just going to keep digging a deeper pit. It's going to keep leaving us feeling more lonely, more down, more depressed. And what we really need is to hold on to Jesus, amen, and let him have his way in our lives. So no soldier that's warring is going to entangle himself in the affairs of everyday life. Why? So that he may please the one who enlisted him as a soldier. Amen. Aren't you glad that the Lord called you? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Jesus said, no man cometh unto the, you know, no man cometh unless the Father first drew him. Yes. The Father drew us by his spirit. Amen. I know we all got a story in this place. Yes. Every last one of us have a story. At Amen. some point in time, somebody told you the good news of the gospel. Amen. Amen. And the Holy Spirit ministered and drew you. And you may not be as far as you want to be with the Lord. I get that. Uh, you might feel like you've been a little stagnant, but guess what? You don't have to, we don't have to stay where we are. Amen. We can keep on, we can keep on moving. Amen. Amen. Praise yes. God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Also, if anyone competes as an athlete, look at, this is interesting how he puts these together. So also, that's a, you know, it's a, I guess it's an adverb. I usually know my parts of English, but it, it, it's trend is giving us a transition. It's, probably, it's actually a conjunction. It's transitioning us into the next thought. So this thought right here has been about soldiers. And then he says this also, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not win the prize unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking for farmer ought to be the first to receive his share of the crop. So we have like three different concepts put together here. And, and, and but let's let's go to the to the soldier. That word in the Greek, I thought this was interesting. Um, that word in the Greek, I'm gonna go ahead and dirty up the board. Strato lagio is the Greek word. Strato lagio. Okay. And I thought that it was interesting because I recognized. This particular word right here, uh, well, actually in the Greek right there, this particular word is logia, okay? And this word is talking about speech. It's talking about words, logos. That's where we get the word logos. Y'all heard of that word before. I know most of y'all have. Then in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The word right there in the Greek language is logos. 
So this is a variant form of the word logos. And so it's talking about speaking and it's talking about proclamation. I, I just found this out for today. Strato logio. The word strato means to be encamped, a camp like this, like an army. It could refer to the heavenly host, but it also refers to human soldiers that are encamped and prepared for war. But then you connect it to the rest of the word and it means to ask, bid, boast, call, describe, give out, name, speak forth, tell or utter. See, a soldier in the kingdom of God is supposed to be doing some talking. Come on, somebody, help me out here. We're supposed to be doing some talking. And listen, I just put it right here. Proclaiming the truth and in prayer and intercession. I'm starting to realize more and more that we need to come together and learn how to be intercessory prayer warriors. I believe that with all of my heart. I believe we, if we would come together in unity and begin to pray as a people, as a family, as a church, I'm telling you right now that, that I feel like the Holy Spirit is going to move. He's going to move in our homes. He's going to move in our marriages. Listen to me. You start spending some time in the presence of the Holy Spirit and He's going to start working on your heart. Hallelujah. You start getting intimate with the Holy Spirit and He's going to start dealing with us. He's going to start speaking with yes. us. Yes. He's going to start doing a work in us. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. <laughs> he talked about the soldier. The soldier's got a war. He's not going to get entangled. But then he uses those, the athlete and the farmer. The farmer's share. He, that's what he said, right? He said, he said uh, the farmer ought to be the first to receive the share of his crops. And that makes sense. I mean, you get out there. In the, in, the, in the exhausting time of the year, I, I'm not, I've never been a farmer. I don't really know, so I don't want to speak out of turn. But listen, you got to get in your John Deere tractor nowadays. You got an air conditioning in there. I mean, a lot of people do, not everybody. Okay, but I'm talking about in the old days, bro. Look, I was listening to something the other day, man. I forgot. It said, Elisha plowed the field with 12 yoke of oxen. What you said? You want to talk about productivity? Can you imagine that? 12 yoke of oxen, that man's over there plowing that field. But look, what I'm trying to say is they were plowing fields with a hand plow behind some beast of burdens in the heat of the day. You got to dig that plow in there. You got to steer it, man. That was some real men back in the day. And what I'm trying to say is he's been out there plowing. He's been out there sowing seed. Hey, man, he's been out there. He got to get out there and harvest time. He got to put the sickle to it. We're not talking about we don't have combines yet. We're out there with a sickle trying to take in the harvest and, and throwing the bales and the bundles off to the side. He ought to be able to share in the first part. See, it's... It's kind of like his hungry tummy is driving him on. He, he expects to get something in return. That's what the Proverbs says. It says a man's hungry stomach drives him to move forward. In the same way, whenever we're here to drive, to serve the Lord, we ought, we ought to understand that if we have a spiritual need, we need to get hungry for the presence of the Lord. We need to let God do a work on the inside of our hearts and in our lives. Praise God. His share, whether it's money, food, the farmer's share drives him to plow, sow, and the harvest. Yes. The soldier desires to please his commanding officer. Yes. The athlete, listen, if you are in the Olympics, okay, I don't know nothing about that. I mean, I've watched it a couple of times. But if you are an athlete and you are dedicating your whole life, I've seen some of these young people that come through my clinics and stuff. I mean, gymnasts, oh my gosh. Gymnasts, they have to completely dedicate their whole life to, to exercise and to gymnastics in order to even get a chance of a shot to make it to the collegiate level or definitely to go to the Olympics, okay? I'm talking about serious grinding, and probably eight hours a day, okay? Just grinding in the gym, grinding in the gym, right? To get that one little chance, that one little spot. And then the, the scripture says, if they want to win the prize, they got to compete by the rules. Now, I know that people cheat, but can you imagine the disappointment after you've done put all your time in there, all that endurance, all that years and years, and then you did something silly like deflate a well, he didn't really get in that much trouble for it for deflating that football, but you do something that breaks the rules and you lose the prize. 
Amen. It's in the same concept. The farmer is hungry uh, and he's driven by his desire for his share. Amen. The athlete is working hard and he's going to compete by the rules. Uh, and in the, in the kingdom of God, we got to repeat by the rules, which is the word of God. And that the soldier does not get himself entangled in the cares of the world. Amen. Because he desires to please his commanding officer. Amen. See, if you have a re intimate relationship with Jesus, mm -hmm. I'm not talking about a lackadaisical relationship. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to pick on nobody. I'm just trying to tell you like it is. We're going to preach it like it is. If you have an intimate relationship with Jesus, yes. you're not going to want to cheat on him. The closer you are to him, hallelujah, your heart is going to want to be connected to him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So let's look at verse 14 in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14. The, uh, the subtopic title says, The Unashamed Workman. Oh my, out of my NASB. Look at verse 14. Remind them of these things and solemnly charge them in the presence of God, not to wrangle about words which is useless and leads to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth, but avoid worldly and empty chatter for it will lead to further ungodliness and their talk will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenaeus and Philemus. Now, one of the words there in the King James, the word ruin, okay, in the NASB, is actually in the King James Version, subverting. But what's interesting is that, I think I want to write this up here too, just so you can see it. If you were going to spell it in, in English letters, the Greek word right here for ruin is this word right here. This is how you would spell it with a K, because they don't really have a C in the Greek language. Catastrophe. That's where we get the word catastrophe. Yeah. And so what's happening is, is that he's telling these, he's telling young Timothy as a pastor, he's saying, listen, I want to charge, you need to charge him not to wrangle about with words, useless words that will, that will lead to the ruin of the hearers. Now let's just stop right here for a second. I know we've been talking about words a lot that come out of people's mouths. I, I didn't really intend it. This is where I ended up, right? And, and, but, but let me just say this. That it says that certain times words can lead to the ruin of the hearers, all right? So it says be diligent, right, as a good workman, right? So when this word catastrophe, when I was working on this today, the Lord reminded me of a vision that I had a while back um, whenever I was in prayer. And what the Lord showed me was, was that I think I was on a fast and I had been praying. And all of a sudden I got a glimpse of this. And what it was, was a scene. Some of y'all may remember it. It was a scene of a city and the facade of all the buildings were being hammered. They were beaten down. There was holes in them. Parts of the facade were broken down. It was like a war-torn city. You know, you've seen images on movies before, like old World War II images where they were blitzkrieged or whatever, bombed with multiple bombs, and it just tore the buildings up, and they were all torn up, right? And, um, and, and what the Lord showed me was that the prayers of the saints were bombarding the kingdom of darkness. And that if the, if the saints would continue to trust God and continue to pray and continue to seek his face and to continue to do spiritual warfare, that, 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 that's our part. That's part of our walk with God, to partner with him and for him to be able to use our vessel. I don't know why he chose to do it this way. He chose to use you and I. And when we pray and believe God, it moves the hand of God. And the Lord showed me in this vision. He said, if the saints would continue to pray, then it's something is having an effect in this kingdom of darkness. Yes. The prayers of the saints yes. are having an effect yes. in the kingdom of darkness. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. The prayers of the saints cause the catastrophe. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. If the prayers of the saints bombard the kingdom of heaven and useless talk results in catastrophe, what are all the buildings and defenses of the kingdom of God looking like in the spirit when we speak curses instead of blessings on other people? So if we're over here speaking bad things about people, 
Because it really, if, listen, it, I'm in a good, really good mood tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you should be in a good mood when you preach the gospel. Amen. Amen. But listen, if, if we just think about it, do you think that Jesus, like, I mean, I know he derided, he upbraided the Pharisees because they weren't really servants of God. They were lying and they were deceiving and they were deceiving the people and they were holding them in bondage. So Jesus gave them a what for? He told them. Okay, but when he came to sinners, when he came to, you know, he, he, he was kind and he spoke words of hope and he said, you know, he, he gave words of truth that gave life to people. Amen. And many times we find ourselves in, in times and situations of frustration and we don't even realize it. But the next thing you know, we're, we're just we're just spewing out words that are not kind and are not. For, listen, I'm not trying to say that you get what I'm saying. I'm not trying to preach some flowery gospel. I'm trying to tell you, though, that there is power in our words. I got a book on my shelf in there that I bought for specifically to critique it. But I'm just going to say it like this. There is power in our words. It is. It is. Yeah. We can speak blessings and we can speak curses. Amen. And, there's, and, and, and it, it causes things to happen. So let me ask you this. If I'm over here declaring in the spirit realm during intercession, or if I just come up to Shelby and I'm like, Shelby, man, like you're a blessing to the church, okay? You're a blessing to the church. I appreciate your faithfulness when you play music. Thank you, musicians. And I mean this when I'm saying it now. Thank you, musicians, for giving your time. Amen. Vocalists, thank you for giving your time so that we can worship the Lord. And whenever y'all yield yourselves and you yield your gift to the Lord, it produces a beautiful sound. Amen. I don't know if everybody else believes that, but I believe that. I believe when y'all come together and take the gift that God has given you and you bring it to the Lord, that it brings a beautiful, sweet-smelling aroma into the nostrils of God. And then when we, the saints, join in agreement, hallelujah, I believe when we begin to speak hope and truth into the atmosphere and tell Jesus how much we love him, I believe that it makes a difference. Amen. Amen. And whenever we're in the spirit and we're telling people encouraging things like that, I mean, just being thankful for other people. Yes. You know, I, I've been kind of jaded a lot of my life. I mean, we don't need to get into me, but my, the way my dad was, nothing was ever good enough. You're mediocre at best. Amen. Well, how, how's anybody ever going to rise up? Okay? No. And I'm not talking about just, no, I'm talking about speaking the word of truth. I'm talking about speaking the word of God. I'm not just talking about some flowery message, you know. No, I'm talking about Jesus died to set you free, amen, and the grace of God is flowing in your life. And when you get up there and you give your gift to God, something's happening, amen. Now, I believe that when those things are spoken, that the Holy Spirit can move through that and he can bring encouragement and strengthen people and bring healing to them, amen. So let me ask you a question. Whenever we get all twisted off, and Lord knows Pastor Matt's been there, when we get all twisted off and we get angry, and we start releasing those other things. I know last week I talked about a mosquito sprayer, uh, but, but this is the thing. Who do you think is behind that? The enemy. Come on. Thank you. Because it's sure in Jesus and it's sure in the Holy Spirit. And Lord knows we've all been guilty of it. So we ain't pointing nobody out tonight, but we're just trying to make a point that whenever you or me release that kind of attitude right. full of anger, full of bitterness, and we, and we release that, we are tearing down yes. what God is trying to build up. Yes. And we are working in opposition with the Holy Spirit. Right. Come on, somebody. Help me out here. Yes. We're working in opposition with the Holy Spirit, and we're actually helping the kingdom of darkness yes. whenever we do those things. Lord, help us. All right? So there's something interesting that's happening in this text. Well, one, one of the things is this, is that he, he warns against useless words. Now, we could make a big category, couldn't we? We could have, like, you know, what does that mean? What's a useless word? Well, some of what I was just saying, just negative things that we can say. Idle words, you know, I don't know, talking. I mean, you get the point. I, you know what I put in here? I think I put in here, we will just trust as we move closer to the Lord through prayer and the study of his words that our renewed mind will be more sensitive towards what useless talk is. We don't need Pastor Matt to try to define everything that's useless talk. 
as you and I read the word of God and spend time getting closer to the Lord, he will start to convict yes. our heart yes. whenever we engage in useless talk. Amen. Amen. He'll do it. He'll show you. Now, then after that, it's your job or my job to yield to what the Spirit says. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So then he says this, he says to divide the word of God, amen, to handle it right. You know, one of the things in the definition meant this, to make a straight cut. Hallelujah. My job is to make a straight cut presented to you that way. That's what the idea of what the Apostle Paul is saying, you know, present it for the way that it's written. Make a straight cut. Find out what the Lord's saying and present it as close as you can to the way God wrote it. Amen. So that God's word can be given to God's people and that they can choose what they're going to do with it. Amen. Amen. You are not to imagine in your mind this. You're not to think this way. Pastor Matt taught me right. I'm going to be okay. No. <laughs> now, what are you talking about? If we're talking about your eternal reward. We're talking about your eternal soul. Amen. And so we're going to have to decide whether or not we're going to be soldiers or civilians. Amen. A soldier wars in the battle. They divide the word. They avoid useless worldly talk and actions that will result in catastrophe. Right. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Verse 16 said this. It said, avoid empty and worldly chatter. It spreads like gangrene. I don't know if you are familiar with gangrene, uh, you know, but in medicine, I'm sure most people know what gangrene is. Does it say lead to further ungodliness? Is that the NASB? Yeah. Okay, gangrene, there you go. There's the word, gangrene. And what is gangrene? Gangrene is actually a word for something that's necrotic. What does necrotic mean? Well, it means dead. It's not infection, it's dead. It's a dead body part. Some, something that on your, it could be your finger, it could be your toe. It starts off green, that's the color of death, by the way. Just an interesting side note, the pale horse in the book of Revelation in the Greek is actually Chloros, which is where we get the word chlorophyll or chlorine, because it's actually a green horse because it's the color of death. But anyway, that's just a little extra. Now I'm not talking about that right now. But this is death is the color of green. It starts off green and it'll turn black at times, right? But what happens is, is that if if a person has gangrene, if you don't cut that part off, what does it do? It spreads. What does it spread? To the rest of the body. Oh. <laughs> well, so now what we're talking about is useless words, empty chatter, okay, like what came out of Hymenaeus and Philetus and was spreading like gangrene throughout the body. So what can end up happening is, is that if you have a dead body part, mm -hmm. I'm talking about, we're talking about church now. Yeah, yeah. If you have a dead body part that's spewing death, uh -huh. then that death can spread to the rest of the body. Now, it's not my job to amputate body parts. <laughs> Amen. The Lord said, let, the, let it all. He's going to work it out in the end. Hallelujah. Praise God. But I will say this, and I know y'all are all going to agree with me, that if we want to be true men and women of God, we don't want to be like a gangrene sore yeah. that's causing and spreading death amongst the body. Instead, we want to bring hope. Amen. And we want to bring life. Amen. Amen. So verse 19 says this. Uh, nevertheless, the firm foundation of God stands, having this seal. The Lord knows who are his. And everyone who names the name of the Lord is to abstain from the NASB says wickedness. The King James Version says iniquity. Because see, if I just left the word wickedness right there, see, that's why sometimes I like certain translations. But if I put iniquity, you're like, uh oh, that's talking to me. Come on. Yeah. Now, if I call it wickedness, you might not want to call it that. Well, I don't, I'm not reading tarot cards. I'm not uh, sacrificing goats in the woods. What are you talking about, Pastor Matt? No. It says iniquity. And it means wrongfulness. And what is that talking about? Well, I'm going to tell you what it's talking about. This is the word of the living God right here. Yeah, yeah. You're not even, you're, whether or not you like it or not, any human being, listen, people are either going to be judged by the blood of Jesus or they're going to be judged by the law, one or the other. There's no in between. We're either going to be judged by the law or we're going to be judged by the blood of Jesus. In other words, Jesus took our wrath upon him when he went to the cross. Amen. That was the plan of the Father. That, the, that he would put his son, his sinless 
son. Because you see, when he created mankind, he created Adam in the image and likeness of God. God, God has no sin. So Adam was created in the image and likeness of God without sin. But then Adam fell. And the Bible says that from that point moving forward, at least what we have the narrative of Seth, that man was born in the image and likeness of his father, Adam. And so now he's received the image and likeness of sin. And he has a sinful nature. Okay. And so, but God, the father, sent his son. He bankrupted the heaven of his most prized possession. God became man. Amen. Because God can't die. And God didn't need to die. Because the wages of sin is death. And God's not the one that sinned. Man sinned. And so now man's born in the image of Adam. And he's born in sin with a sinful nature. But God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross. To pay the penalty for our sin. Amen. And now it's just waiting. Hallelujah. It's just waiting in the ATM. That's my little illustration. It's waiting in the ATM. He gave you a pin. It's called faith. All you got to do is drive up there. Boom, boom, boom. Seven, 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 seven. And you receive your withdrawal. Hallelujah. The, faith, the grace is waiting already. It's already been purchased. It's sitting there waiting for you. You just got to go grab it by faith. You got to believe it by faith. You got to say in your heart. Say in your heart. Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus. I was born in sin, but I've also sinned, and I need you, Lord. I recognize it now. Oh, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I believe you died for my sin. I believe you rose from the dead. Oh, sweet Jesus, come into my heart. Have your way in my life. Oh, sweet Spirit of God, come and live on the inside of me. Convict me of sin. Lead me and guide me in your truth, oh, Lord. Lead me and guide me in your truth. Because, see, once you've got the Holy Spirit living in you and then somebody speaks truth, like right now, I'm telling you right now, I believe this with all of my heart, the Holy Spirit is deeming people. Yeah. Just like he deemed me. Just like he was deeming me earlier. Ding, ding, ding. Right? Right there. Boom. Poking. Showing you. Showing you. Showing me. What's going on in our heart and in our lives? Come on. And so what we got to do is we just got to come clean. We got to put it under the blood. But see, true repentance requires that we turn away from it. We turn away from our hardness, our stubbornness. We turn away from our own way. And we submit ourselves to the truth of God's word by his grace. By his grace. We don't ignore the voice of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's been knocking. I mean, look, even my hair, the girl that does my hair told me that. I, I mean, she, three weeks in, she's like, he just keeps knocking. He keeps knocking. So when he knocks, I listen. Hallelujah. When he knocks, I listen. See, she said at first, I didn't really think that was him. I said, that's not him. That's something else. No. He, he, and she said, you know what? I realized it was him. He was knocking. Because when I submitted to that, Boom! More joy, more hope. Dude, I love that girl's testimony. I mean, she don't probably have nobody. I turn her on to some preachers. She's been watching these preachers. I only text her once a month when I go get my little haircut. And each time I get a little update. And I'm just telling you right now. She's like, I, and I know I've told you all the story, but I can't get over it. I'm just so excited about what God did in this, in this young lady's life. I said, how did you know? That you knew that you were really saved. She said, I went to sleep for the first time since I was a little girl. I'm like, what you talking about? Oh, she said, oh, they had a plan for me. Come on, somebody knows what I'm talking about. They had a plan of destruction for me. And I was hearing it. And, and, and guess what? I was moving towards it. But guess what I did? I said, oh, Lord. I fell to my knees. She said, I fell to my knees and I cried out to God and I crawled up in the bed and I went to sleep for the first time like that and I don't know how long. And she said, oh, by the way, I'm off all that medicine. I've been on three different medicines since I was 12 years old and I'm off all that. She said, I don't need it. I don't need it. I got the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Healing from the Spirit of God. But we sometimes won't even receive the healing because we won't Lord, we won't answer the door. All right. All right. He's knocking. And he wants to heal us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, help us. Help us to yield to your truth. Thank you. And so he goes on in verse 20. He says, now in a large house, there are not only gold and silver vessels, but also vessels of wood and of earth and wear, some to honor, some to dishonor, Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from these things, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified, useful to the master, prepared for every good work. Wow, that's something, huh? 
So, I mean, you got vessels. I mean, I don't know. You got some gold, silver, some little candelabras. We lived in Singapore for a while. Mama bought a bunch of brass. Got like little brass vessels, gold vessels. She also got the earthenware, some pottery, right? But, but the point is, is that it's all spread out in the house. And some are honorable. Some are dishonorable. Well, you know what he's talking about. I mean, he's talking to Baal Lane. He's really talking about the house of God. Yeah. Amen. And he's talking about vessels. And you're a vessel. And I'm a vessel. Amen. And sometimes we're using our vessel for the right things. Sometimes we're using our vessel for the wrong thing. And so sometimes in the house of God, now this is an event house, but I mean, if we're honest with one another, like there's all of us have, you know, at times in our life, been partaking in dishonorable practices. Yes. Now, come on. Amen. Somebody else, right? Yes. And and then and then at some times we're practicing an honorable practice. Yes. Lord help us. Yes. Help us to reject dishonorable yes. practices. Yes. Help us to embrace yes. honorable practices. Yes. Lord help by the power of your Holy Spirit to sanctify us. Amen. To to do a work on the inside of us. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Yes. So that he can use us. You know the Holy Spirit, I know I keep using that little uh, illustration about the dove and he's happy in that clean water and he's flitting around and he's happy and he's playing he's got water splashing he wants to be in a clean environment mm -hmm. and if we will allow and listen it's not I want to be clear on this this is not a legalistic message you cannot do this in your own strength you cannot yield to the spirit to the voice of God in your own strength what you need what we have to understand is that Jesus already died on the cross Amen. And he, he defeated the works of Satan. That's what it says. In Colossians chapter 2, he defeated the principalities and powers. They, they do not have authority over us. The sinful nature, the power of the sinful nature was broken when Jesus died at the cross. Amen. It no longer has power over us. But when we yield to it, we give it power. That's why Paul said, don't open up the door. Don't get the don't get placed in the devil. Every single time we think we're going to just take a little peek, it doesn't work that way, my friend. When you open that door up, I'm telling you, sin will keep you longer than you want to stay, and it's going to make you do things that you never intended on doing. You can't be a friend with sin and think you're going to come out unscathed. I know these things because why? Because not just because I read it, because I tried it, and it doesn't work. Been there, done that, and it causes untold pain and heartache. And half the time, my, my, my heart's all twisted up. I need the Lord to do a work in me. Amen. Help us, Lord. He wants our vessels to be sanctified so that he can use us. Amen. The believer who desires to serve the Lord, at least in a biblical way, has some specific responsibilities based on what we looked at. Engage spiritual warfare. Avoid wrong words. Amen. A spiritual soldier engages with words. He uses prayer, proclamation. He speaks life, not death. He abstains from wickedness. He cleanses himself, making himself a vessel of honor. How do you cleanse yourself? Well, Jesus has cleansed you, okay, but but you and I have to go to the presence of the Lord whenever you have, we have to repent. Yes. We have to repent. We have to get our heart right with the Lord. We have to turn in the other direction. Hey, listen, don't let the look, look, don't let the Holy Spirit speak to you tonight and then you leave it. And you don't deal with it. Come on, Sam. Help me out. Yeah. Don't you, you, you leave it and you don't deal with it. I'm, we're going to have an opportunity for people to come to the altar tonight to get their heart right with the Lord. But let me just say this. Even if you, if the enemy is able to keep you in your seat for some reason, because I'm, I'm talking about the people that the Holy Spirit is speaking to. I'm talking about the people that the Holy Spirit is dealing with your heart. Okay? If the enemy is able to keep you in your seat, do please, please do your own self a favor. Do do the Holy Spirit justice. And at least when you get home, do some bit at least whisper to the Holy Spirit. Come on. Just a whisper. Say, Lord, Lord, please help me to get out of this thing. Whatever I'm in, whatever I'm in in the midst of that I know is against you, help me, Lord, to get out of it. Because the Lord's not okay with us living in that, especially after Jesus did what he did for us. Amen? Lord, help me to get out of it. I don't want to get out of it, but I know you know how to get me out of it. Amen? Hallelujah. I want to be clear, though. I do understand that there's both a positional and a progressive sanctification. Amen? But you, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, let me, let me break that down a little bit. <laughs> in case you don't. When you first got saved, right. and the blood was applied to you, 
Amen. Applied to you. And, and the Holy Spirit, then guess what happened? The Holy Spirit moved in. That's according to John chapter 14, according to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. The Holy Spirit made your heart his home. And according to the word of God, you, you are already made holy. That's right. That's right. You are already made holy because you've been clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Amen. Amen. See, it's not your holiness. It's not your righteousness. It's Amen. his righteousness right. that was given to you as a gift. That's Romans chapter 5, verse 17. The word gift is used five different times. And on, in verse 17, we're told what the gift is. It's Jesus' righteousness. See, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God the Father gave a gift. He gave his son. Jesus gave a gift. He gave his life. And in giving his life, there was an exchange. And the exchange was that Jesus took upon him the guilt and the weight of sin, our sin, and he exchanged to us in giving us his righteousness. And whenever that transaction took place, it allowed the Holy Spirit to move into our heart and in our lives. And so now we're clothed with Christ. Amen. John, uh, Galatians 3, 27. You've been baptized into Christ. Those of you that have been baptized into Christ have put him on. You have clothed yourself with Christ Jesus. You're clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Whenever the Father looks at you, he sees the righteousness of Jesus. Praise God for that. Praise God. But, but it's not like he, hallelujah, it's not like he doesn't see yes. He's forgiven us. He's moved our sin as far as the east is from the west. But it's not like he doesn't know those things that are in our life that the word of God is telling us that we need to come clean about. He knows that we can't just get a, think that we're going to get away with that. I mean, come on. So I know I preached this last week, but I, maybe we need to stay here a little bit longer. We can't just think that we're going to get away with those things. But listen, there's coming a day, when, uh, and I've been preaching this for a year, when there's no more talk at some point. He's been saying, come let us reason together. No more talk. And now it's time to do business. Help us, Lord. Amen. So but not only is there positional sanctification, you're holy because you're in Christ, but there's also progressive right. sanctification. Right. Amen. Amen. And, and part of a big part of sanctification is actually knowing what this word says. Because because sometimes, you know, now I'll tell you, once the Holy Spirit moves in your heart, he'll start to he'll start to tell you what's right and wrong. It's pretty quick. You know. And then hey, look, I was in for a week. And say for a week, and he said, you ain't drinking no more. Now, can I tell you that I listened to it? Like I was supposed to? Unfortunately, no. I'm not proud of that. But he specifically told me, you are not to drink anymore. Because, and especially why. Now, why don't we get into a discussion about alcohol? Because it'll take us at least three hours, but I can do it. Okay. <laughs> but let me say this. He, this is what the Holy Spirit just cut through the chase for me because he said, because when you drink, you don't act like a Christian. Period. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. Hello. Come on, Hello. Hey, he got to get on. Oh, 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 what is a buzz? That, that, no, I don't even want to talk a whole lot about drinking. I'm just trying to tell you what the, the Spirit said. You don't drink because when you drink, you don't act like a Christian. And all that proved to be true Come on. In, in the times of my rebellion. It all proved to be true. Okay, and and so so you, sometimes you don't even need the word of God. The Holy Spirit starts speaking to you, but then once you start getting into the word of God, right. then now the Holy Spirit is really able to speak to you. Right. Amen. And when you start speaking, we're supposed to start listening Amen. by the grace of God. It's a beautiful thing whenever we let God have His way in our heart and in our life. Amen. Yes. Especially in the days we're living in. Come on. Right? I mean, come on, somebody. Help me here. Y'all know good and well that we're living in the last of the last days. It doesn't make a rocket sign. And listen, some people say, oh, preacher, you're just, you're kind of going off the deep in here. Man, listen, I interview people on the regular at the clinics. I work at two different clinics, and whenever the topic comes up, I'm like, man, what you think of? They, they're all in agree. Everybody. I'm talking about people that aren't even believers. They're agreeing. The, this world is getting dark, man. The spirit of darkness is on the face of the earth and most most Christians feel it in their in their spirit that, that something's happening yeah. right even the people in the world feel sometimes they people in the world know that wickedness is making a move but guess what people in the church are knowing hallelujah the Lord is moving amen hallelujah. whenever the darkness comes because God's gonna allow the light to shine even brighter. I don't know about you but I want my light to shine amen. praise God so so I just wanted to kind of close with this. You don't even have to turn there, but Peter said this, because we're talking about the vessels, we're talking about the house, 
We're talking about living for the Lord. We're talking about being sanctified. And, and the, Peter wrote this. Musicians, y'all can come forward. He said, coming to him as a living stone, which has been rejected by men, but is choice and precious in the sight of God. You also, as living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. I mean, think about that. So he's the living stone. He's full of life. He was rejected. The Jews rejected him. Um, he was the living stone, but look, he said, but we have become lifeless stones. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God has made us life and stone. You see, he's, he's imparted his life to us. If, we're, if we are born again believers this morning, he has imparted his life to us. Maybe, maybe somebody in this place, you say, I don't even know what it means for sure to be a born again believer. It just simply means to accept Jesus' as sacrifice for your sin, to believe he is the answer, to invite him in, to repent of your sin, to ask him to have his way. Amen.